So now that you've done a little exercise appreciating yourselves, we'd like to talk about a tool called appreciative inquiry that excites us and the committee because it fits so well with the appreciative culture that we've already created here. And we can use this approach to build on all the positive work that is happening within our community and continue to envision and dream about our work together in the future. First, let's start by telling you a little bit about the work of our Committee on Shared Ministries. We want to help cultivate an environment in our congregation of inquiry, empathy, reflection, appreciation, celebration, and importantly, dreaming about where we want to go together as a community. Our mission as a committee on shared ministries is to focus on the society's missions rather than on individual committees or specific tasks or groups. The Unitarian Universalist Association has been encouraging this way of thinking for some time, and we are very much in favor of this shift. Now, ministries are actions that support our missions. In the past, it's been common to think that the minister is responsible for identifying, communicating, and implementing this set of ministries. But now we really want to think of the mission and the supporting ministries as the responsibility of the whole congregation. It should rely on the reflection and commitment of the entire community. We share the ministries of UUSA. In the past, the Committee on Ministry was in part a consultation and support for the minister. But our new charge is not to provide a support system for the minister, who is encouraged to seek collegial support from other ministers. Our charge for the Committee on Shared Ministries is nurturing the whole congregation's ministerial outreach within our community and out to the greater community. So if our committee's work is to focus on our society's mission and ministries, what are our ministries? Well, that's a pretty good question. And one which UUSA should focus on and clarify as we go forward. But at least as a base, the Board of Trustees identified this, these ministries in our charge worship services, religious education, pastoral care and caring circle, music, welcoming guests and new members. And another category that I would like to call community development. And that would include the Green Sanctuary Committee, small group, uh, covenant groups, and uh, other things like that. The point is to clarify that our mission and our ministries are not the same as our committees or other society groups. In many cases, multiple individuals and current groups share responsibility for supporting a particular ministry. And a single group or committee might have a stake in many ministries. The Committee on Shared Ministries is not charged with evaluating the work of the congregation and how we're doing in each of our missions or ministries, but rather we are charged with helping the congregation to explore how it's doing 
and to see what the UUSA wants to be and how to achieve that. And that is where appreciative inquiry comes in. In appreciative inquiry is an approach or tool we can use to look at how we are accomplishing our mission and ministries. Now, in conclusion of my portion, I offer a quote from the writings of the early 20th century philosopher, Simone Weil, quote, kind attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity, end quote. I would add that this attention is the rarest and purest form of love. So I'll build on what Bo has just talked about and help all of us explore what is appreciative inquiry. And I'll start. Brenda, I did it again. I unmuted you accidentally. Okay. I muted you, sorry. Okay. So appreciative inquiry is an approach that groups like us can use to think about our organization and its direction going forward. Basically, it's what is the organization? What does it do well now? And what does it want to do better or differently in the future? And how do we, how do, we do those things? Today, we're talking about using appreciative inquiry as an approach we can use to explore the UUSA's mission and ministries in the months ahead, and also to acknowledge together all the ways that we're already practicing many of the elements of this approach. The, mo the most important thing to know about appreciative inquiry is that it uses the power of positive thinking to generate even more positivity and optimism. People who have used this approach describe it as energizing because it will help us focus on what excites us, what empowers us, and what engages us as a group of people and as a community compared to other approaches that are commonly used to think about organizations and their directions. For example, many organizations that we've all been part of use problem solving approaches. And while this approach has many benefits, it can be a it can be draining or exhausting way to go about things because it focuses constantly on all the things that are going wrong or, of, or all of a group's weaknesses. But like we said, appreciative inquiry focus on what's focuses on what's working and what's positive, and it uses that positive energy to build on itself to envision the direction forward. So, whoops, sorry. So let's look at the five basic steps of the appreciative inquiry process. Step one is to define a, a topic or perfect purpose for a specific exercise in appreciative inquiry. So as a congregation, we hope to engage in several inquiries over the next year or years. So for example, we could choose to conduct a inclusive and collaborative inquiry around different aspects of our mission or around some of our ministries, for example. So we won't do just one huge appreciative inquiry. We might do several smaller ones. Um, in step two of the process, we, which is called discovery or to discover, we discover current positive actions that are currently happening within our society. And while this might sound like simply taking stock of the status quo, it's actually much more than that. And this is a really important step to recognize all of our strengths, to be appreciative of the best of now, the best of what is, and really taking the time to lift up or shine a light on all the good work that's going on around our missions and our ministries and the things that we're inquiring about. This step really creates a positive, optimistic mindset for the group and for all the next steps in the process. So it's important not to gloss over this step and jump straight into step three, which is really tempting 
Because step three on the next step is where you start to dream and imagine and envision what could be and think about what your efforts might look like in the next six months or 12 months. And step four is the design phase. And this is the step where you start to put the dream into action in small ways. What are some small steps we can take? What are some pilots we could do or small projects we could do to, to get our feet wet before we're ready to jump into the deep end of a pool, for example? What can we do to gain some experience with this new way of doing things? And then finally, step five in the, in the process is when you're really ready to deploy or ready to what this is when you've gained some experience and you're ready to take on a larger larger project or really to make your work a more permanent part of the society's culture. So those are the five steps of the appreciative inquiry process. And we hope that you'll agree that there are many positive things to say about this pro approach for examining um, an organization like ours. And our committee has already seized many, many aspects of appreciative inquiry already happening within our society. Um, we, we focus on what's working now. We avoid jumping right into suggested solutions. We try to avoid making people defensive about why the current situation is not broke, why it's not working. We generate energy and confidence by focusing on successes. We set a tone of positive communication and respect and collaboration. We're trying to build and focus on positive outcomes. And post, most importantly, um, we like this appreciative inquiry approach because it, it's consistent with our UU principles and our existing culture. So to that end, I'd like to share a poem that our committee thinks speaks to our ongoing appreciation of each other and our individual and shared strengths today and going forward. The poem is called A Rock in Our Pocket and it's by Reverend Teresa I. Soto. When they are kids, it seems like a profession, talking to rocks and listening for their beauty for the song that they say that says they that they belong together they pick up the shiny one the round one the flat one the pretty one they store them in boxes in bags in pockets don't worry they are very clean after being laundered but what you will miss unless you pay attention is this there's always the possibility that we can treasure what is in our pockets rather than the thing we have yet to attain there is the knowledge of the earth beneath all of us that a plain sparkly rock can give. It is the hurtling round rock on which we race around the universe. There is the sense of beauty all around, but also choosing to experience it, to seize it and savor it. You could do worse than a practical ongoing yes. This community will not begrudge you any reminder of your individual, our shared strength carry it with you everywhere. Be ready to share it. You know where you can get more. <laughs>